Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to buy a $300 car. Yes, that is right, you heard correctly. Under this car cover is a car I purchased for $300. Sure, it needs a little bit of work, but nothing we can't fix, and it runs and drives, sorta. Now I'm doing this video because I just hit 3 million subscribers and this is the 300th video. So it's a good fit. But instead of following other YouTubers and buying a Porsche or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or something fancy like that, you guys know what this channel is all about and it's all about affordability. It's about working in your driveway at home and using common hand tools and soapy water to work on your car. Also, I get comments all the time when you guys watch the videos saying, oh, the videos are great, and after watching them, you feel like you could replace the wheel bearing or replace the brakes, but you're still kind of nervous to try it out on your own car because it's your daily driver, and if you break it, you won't be able to get to school or to work. So this $300 car is a perfect opportunity to learn, to experiment, to try stuff out because worst case scenario, if this breaks completely, you do something and totally mess it up, you can call a junkyard right now and get this towed off your property, and they'll pay you around 250 bucks. Or you can follow the Jaguar video and do a complete part out and make some money. And for all the younger viewers who are always commenting who watches his videos but doesn't have a car, well here's your opportunity. Save up $300, you could get yourself a car to work on and to get ready for when you finally can drive. So with that being said, any last minute guesses on what this car is? I asked you guys what you thought on Instagram and I got thousands of guesses in the comments, but only two people got it. Well, the time has come to finally show you what I got. And it is such a fun car. All right, the first step to buying a super cheap car is to find it. And it's as easy as going online and searching all the major used car websites. But instead of searching each individual website and inputting all your information over and over, which could take forever, I have a little trick you guys taught me. And that's using Auto Tempest. All you have to do is input your information down here once, and then it searches all the major used car websites. Make it really simple and easy. Now to find the cheap car, you could put in your make and model. I don't really know what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to do that. And then this is the key right here, right where it says keywords. You want to put in needs work. And for price, I put 1500 or below. So let's search that. It is going to be searching all these websites so it might take a few seconds and check out all of these results now this one right here is something that stands out so here's the perfect example this is a mustang it needs a new transmission he says it grinds in third gear i bet you you could get this for around a thousand bucks transmission is like three hundred dollars at a junkyard you replace it yourself you spent thirteen hundred dollars and you have like a three or four thousand dollar mustang especially if you wrap or paint it now another good example maybe needs work is too vague for you let's just say you're good at changing brakes Actually, let's search head gasket so we can find a real cheap car. Now, a car that I came across is this Honda Del Sol. I've always liked these since I was a little kid. That rear window, the way it goes down, the top comes off. It's unique. It's different. It's a nice little daily. Parts are cheap, and it's easy to work on. It has 200,000 miles. It has some new parts, battery, tie rods, headlights. But it needs a control arm and head gasket, both things that we could do. Now, he is asking $1,000, but I'm pretty sure we could get this car for less. So thank you Auto Tempest for supporting the video and making it easy to find inexpensive used cars like this. So let's go check this car out. Since the car can't be driven home, I have to pick up a trailer. Just in case we get the car, I can use my truck to tow it home. I've never towed a car before, so this is gonna be an experience. The trailer is really cheap and I have it for 24 hours. And normally I would see the car first, but I'm fairly confident I'm gonna get this car. And I think it's gonna be good to be like, hey, I have a trailer, I'll tow it away right now. Here's my offer. That way we could get a low price. And after a short drive, we are finally here and there she is. All right, I'm actually pretty excited about this car because I've loved this car since I was a kid. Mostly because of that unique rear window design and the target top. This is probably like one of three Hondas I would actually own. And keep in mind, if this car checks out, I'm hoping to get it for less than $500, so it's gonna be far from perfect. But with that said, I wanna find something where if there's broken parts, those parts are cheap and easy to fix. Hey, hey I can't believe y'all, it's really you. <laughs> How's it going? Man, I gotta tell you, it's an honor to meet you. Uh, my name is Jensen, by the way, and this is my 93 Honda Del So. Uh, I'm gonna just give you a quick run through, run around about you know any problems that it has. So currently, the major issue is the blown head gasket, big problem. A lot of smoke out the tailpipe. The control arm it does need replacing here and there. You're gonna hear a squeak or two. Um, cool features about the car: the top does come off, the back window rolls down, so it'd be a great for a summer car. The back, he got a dent or two. You know, a little body work here. Nothing a uh, pro like you can't handle really okay can you pop the hood yeah man no problem let me show you thanks and let's see what we got 
Now at first glance, this doesn't look that great, but in reality, it's just some chipping off paint, maybe a little bit of surface rust. It's really not that bad, especially after we clean it. What we don't want to see is any major rust, anything that goes into the frame. I don't see any of that. He said he has a new battery in there. That's good. Looking around. Looks like we have a new alternator down there, or at least a newer one. Right here it says we had a timing belt changed at 185,000 miles, so 20,000 miles ago. New belt and hopefully new water pump. The motor mount here looks pretty new. Right where my hand is should be a power steering pump, but there isn't. So that means that this is a non-power steering car, which is kind of cool. It's small enough. But overall, this looks pretty good. Just needs a little bit of cleaning. We need to replace that head gasket. And he did say he used that head gasket sealer in the radiator, so we need a new radiator. But the best part about this car, parts are so cheap. Brand new radiator, 40 bucks. Head gasket with head bolts and all the other gaskets you need, 50 bucks. I did a bunch of research, and it makes sense why kids like to buy Hondas for their first car. Parts are cheap, easy to find, and you could customize it easily. Can you start her up? One thing that's a crystal clear indicator that you have a head gasket leak is check out the radiator. Open the radiator cap when the engine's cold, and look at this. You can see that smoke puffing out. That is a classic head gasket sign. Also, if we take the oil cap off, you can see underneath it's frothy like it has a head gasket leak. And it doesn't look like we have any blow-by, which is good. That means the rings are still good after 200,000 miles. Am I able to take her for a quick spin? I know we can't drive it long, but just something like right around the block? Go for it, man. Now this is my first time driving a Honda, and wow, that shifter feels horrible. I can't even tell if it's in gear. I think that's first. And look at the cloud of smoke coming out of the exhaust. So this has to be done real quick so it doesn't overheat, and I just need to get a feel for the car. And holy smokes, no power steering takes a lot of muscle to turn the wheel. But it does have a good turning radius since it's small. And because it's small, it should also get about 40 miles a gallon, which is awesome. I'm able to shift through all the gears and the suspension feels firm and doesn't float around. So it's a quick test drive, but we now know the suspension, brakes, and transmission are good, which is important. So now, how hard is it to take the top down? So what you want to do is reach your hand under right here, see the little button right there, push it towards the back of the car, grab the lever as you're holding that button, push it outwards, and that's it. Oh man, that is so easy. Look at that, the top is off. How cool is that? Now can you show me how to roll down that rear window? It comes down, right? Yeah, bottom switch right there. And look at that. This target top is actually how the car got its name, Del Sol, which in Spanish means of the sun. That is such a cool feature. They did a good job with that, that is neat. It's also a good idea to check in the trunk, so we'll pop that open and see what we got in here. Now we just wanna make sure a spare is in here and sometimes there's some uh, good information left in the trunk. So this is all messed up. So we got our spare, we also have a bunch of junk. Looks like there's an extra belt, a bunch of garbage down here. And check this out, this is actually useful. These are bushings. It says right in there, made in Japan. So I think these are Honda OEM bushings, which are not only expensive bushings, but good bushings. Also looks like we have some ball joints. Oh, this is good. This is for the interior. This piece was missing, that's actually helpful. And oh, another piece from the interior that was missing. Beautiful. And then finally, I just want to look back here behind here where the quarter panel is. So that's definitely a good sign. You could see the welded body panel in here. So they must have cut out the rust, welded in a new piece of metal, and then finished it with Bondo. And they just didn't do a great job with the Bondo work. But there's no rust back behind this panel, which is good. And this car is looking pretty good. So interior wise, the car is in decent shape. I'd say the weak spot is right here. This looks really bad with that cover missing, but that's actually not too bad because we found this inside the trunk. So clean that up, fit it in properly, and that looks a lot better. So the interior checks out, the essentials all work. Just needs a little bit of cleaning and TLC in here. I think we can get this interior to look real nice. Now with that being said, we need a head gasket, the front suspension needs work, the shifter is vague, and we need to do body work, all inexpensive fixes. So what I'm thinking this car is worth is three to $400. I'm gonna offer them three, go up to 400 max. The car itself in good condition, we could probably get $3,000 for it, especially since it's a stick shift. So that's my game plan. Let's go talk to Jensen and see what we could do. Okay. So I do like the car, it is pretty cool, it has that top on it, that's really neat. It is kind of banged up, you can see that it definitely needs some suspension work in the front. Uh, obviously the head gasket. Now I think $1,000 is too much, I have to fix it up, I have to do some work to it. What I'd like to offer you, what I think the car is worth is $300 and uh, you know I got the trailer, the trailer is ready to go on the back of my truck, I'll take it today, ready to go, 300 cash right now. Yeah man, I completely understand, I know how hard of a work this is going to be. 
And for the three hundred dollars, I'll take it, man. No, yeah, get it awesome. Out of here. You got yourself a deal. All right, sounds good, man. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, we got ourselves a Del Sol. How cool is that? Okay, let's go get this thing loaded up. Actually, let's first go do some paperwork. Let's get the uh, if you could get the title. All right, so with the title, although titles will be different for each state, this will give you a good idea what to look for. Right here in New Jersey, this is where the lien holder would sign. That means somebody else owns the car. It could be a bank, could be the dealer, could be another person. There would be a stamp here and signatures, and there's nothing, which means this car is owned outright by Jensen. Now you want to make sure that the owner's information, the person who's selling you the car, is the owner. So ask him for his driver's license or an ID or something. You can see that's his real name, has all of his information here. That's his driver's license number. I checked it with his driver's license and we're good to go. You also want to make sure that he's selling you the exact car, so check the VIN number, make sure it's the Honda 1993, all good. So that's the basics on checking a title. It varies from state to state, but this looks all good. Now we can sign it over to me and we can buy the car. All right, 300 bucks, all yours. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. I still can't believe it. Never in a million years did I think my next car would be a Honda. So let's get this car on a trailer. Good. Get the strap over the front tire and tighten it down so it won't go anywhere. Do the same thing to the other side. Well, that's it, dude. You'll see her on the videos, hopefully, so yeah. uh, you'll be able to keep tabs on her. And yeah, I appreciate it, man. Very yeah. nice meeting you. Yeah. Well, I'm almost home with no problems at all. I was concerned my truck wouldn't tow this, but it didn't even feel like I was pulling a car. And since it's dark, we'll unload the car tomorrow. It's morning, and now to get the car off the trailer and into my driveway so we can look under the car. Now I'm testing out this new jack which will quickly and safely lift the whole car off the ground. And this is pretty cool. And no matter how you lift up your vehicle, you always want to give it a hard shake to make sure it feels solid, and it does, so we're safe to go under the car. And the whole car is lifted up nice and high so we could go inspect underneath. So hopefully we go under here and there's not a lot of rust at all. Looking over here at the transmission and the oil pan, I don't see any leaks, which is good. But the first thing I want to check out is the suspension on this side. Now at the test drive, I did see there's a lot of wear on the outside here, which means that there's positive camber, which is a suspension issue. Going under here, let's check out the suspension. Positive camber could be caused by worn out ball joints or bushings. So to see what the problem is, you want to grab a pry bar and just move the suspension around looking for play. And just look at how much this moves. Now that's enough play to cause that camber issue. And lucky for us, this is basically a free fix. We had the ball joints and the bushings in the trunk already, and these are all brand new and look like high quality parts. So I think this could be a really good video, how to install bushings into control arms and also how to press in ball joints. Maybe we could even rebuild the entire front suspension. So now let's head to the middle of the car where the shifter is, cause I wanna check the bushings. And just as I thought, besides being very rusty, there is a ton of play in here. And that's why this feels all loosey goosey when you go to shift. Just check out the bushings in here, they're shot. So hopefully fixing those, will fix the vague shifter. I'll probably try to remove this and sand it and paint it as well to get all this rust out of here. And one thing that just caught my eye, check this out, this isn't good. Check out all this rust here. That right there is the carpet. So our floorboard is rusted. This actually doesn't look bad. Over here, this is all solid metal. So it looks like we'll just have to cut out this corner right here and weld in a piece of steel and that'll fix that. Super simple and that's actually a really good video, how to fix rusty floor pans. And finally checking out the rest of the car. The exhaust is a little rusty but nothing bad, it's just surface rust. I mean, everything looks good. The gas tank looks good, the suspension looks good. I really can't complain. It's got drum brakes but we could do a drum to disc conversion. I'm actually really excited we got ourselves a good car for 300 bucks so I really can't wait to get started fixing up this car and that is how a project car is born in this case an affordable one $300 now I couldn't wait I got super excited so I went out to the parts store and I already got everything we need so the car could be driven safely and reliably so to fix this car it's gonna cost a total of hundred and fifty dollars leaving us with a grand total of 450 bucks under $500 for a good running car now this is where I need my subscribers help yes you guys I need you to comment below and let me know what you want to see done with this car. Do we want to do a Wheeler Dealer style episode where I buy it, fix it, and flip it and we see the profit? Do we want an individual episode for how to replace the head gasket, how to fix a shifter that's loose, how to install ball joints and bushings in your suspension? All those videos could get done and we could learn a lot and I could use this car as a daily. I mean, it does have the top which comes off and it'll be fun to drive around. Or we could do something crazy. We could do a motor swap. We could do an amphibious vehicle. Since this car was less than 500 bucks, we could do a 24 hours of lemons endurance racing car. There are so many options. Make sure you comment your ideas below. 
I will look at all of them. I want to see what you guys have to say. Just like we did with the Drift Sting Project, I'm leaving the fate of this car in your hands. As always, hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, definitely consider subscribing. We got a lot of cool videos coming up. And finally, all the tools and products I used in this video are linked in the description so you could easily find them. Can't wait to see what we're going to do with this vehicle. 3 million subscribers, my 300th video, and the fate of the car is up to you, my subscribers. So stay tuned.